Hi and welcome to Best in Tesla. So we have new full self-driving videos coming from Tesla. And Tesla of course launched a robotaxi service in Austin at a very low scale of course, but it is here. But it's like people still think Waymo can magically stay in front and scale up like crazy. But there is one big thing keeping Waymo from reaching scale in the next five to ten years out in the future that not many are talking about. It is basically already game over and Guidehouse autonomous leaderboard has aged like a glass of milk in the sun. Or maybe a glass of milk on the sun. <laughs> but anyway, it's hard to have been more wrong than Guidehouse was. So let's check it all out and let's dive right in. So another big thing about Waymo and Tesla and getting to scale that I have talked about before on this channel is that LiDAR supply chain is not very big yet. As Elon has said, the most difficult thing for the Optimus robot is actually to scale up a complex supply chain for the production of the robot, not making the robot itself. And Brian Wang talked about this a couple of years ago. Actually, I interviewed him on this topic. If you want to revisit that video, I will leave a link to it in the description down below. But like we talked about back then, for anyone to make 1 million robotaxis with LiDAR systems, they need a supply ready with 4 million LiDAR units, as Waymo uses 4 LiDAR units on their robotaxis. I believe it was more back in the days, but today they use 13 cameras, 4 LiDARs and 6 radars. So for Waymo and only Waymo to get to 1 million robotaxis with their LiDAR system, not their radars and the cameras, just their LiDAR system as they are today, Waymo should need a supply of 4 million LiDAR units for the automotive industry. When Brian Wen and I talked about it back in November 2022, there had been only produced 200,000 units of LiDAR in 2021. But in 2024, we are now at 1.6 million units. So a big increase in three years. But remember, Waymo would need 4 million units by itself. But the entire automotive industry, including all the automakers that do not have full self-driving cars, but just level 2 or level 3 driver assist systems that also use LiDAR, so the whole global automotive industry have access to 1.6 million LiDAR units. That is only enough for around 400,000 cars with LiDAR systems. So even if Waymo had 1 million cars available and had geofenced most city in the US and could actually refit 1 million cars with their sensor sweep in just one year, they would not be able to scale to 1 million robotaxis within a year, as they will simply not have the LiDAR supply chain built out yet. And if the supply chain continues to grow with that 500,000 units a year, it will still be like five years before global supply chain of LiDAR will be able to meet Waymo's demand if they want to build 1 million robotaxis. And that is if Waymo got the whole world's automotive LiDAR supply in five years. And they of course will not. So this is also why Brian said that Tesla is five to ten years ahead of the competition in the robotaxis. Not because of their software, but simply because Tesla already has a complex supply chain built up and already built cars that can be robotaxis in the millions. So from a year from now, Tesla will have produced another about 2 million cars that can all operate as robotaxis. So the only question is how many will Tesla sell to customers and how many will they put on the streets as robotaxis? And how many will put their own private Tesla on the robotaxi network as that Airbnb thing that Elon has talked about? And how many cybercabs will Tesla have produced at that point in one year? Tesla could, if they wanted to, have 1 million robotaxis running in the street in one year from now. No problem. Not saying that they will, I'm simply pointing out that Tesla 
could, as they are already producing cars that can drive themselves at scale. The rest of the world that all rely on lidar will have maybe lidar units enough for 525,000 cars with full self-driving tech or driver assist systems if LiDAR supply grows another 500,000 units in 2025. So this is really something people overlook when they talk about Waymo and Tesla and Uber. If every single automaker and robotaxi operator on the planet put all their fleet of drivable cars on Uber's network just in the US, they will still only have about 525,000 units in a year from now. Tesla could have twice that available on their own if they want to. So this should really put into perspective why no one will be able to catch up with Tesla and their scale, because many will, of course, partner with Uber and many LiDAR units will not be used for full self-driving, but just driver assist features. So someone like Waymo has no chance whatsoever to keep up with someone like Tesla when it comes to the scale of the robotaxis. Even if they got all the global supply of LiDAR for the automotive industry from everyone else, they would still not be enough to keep up with Tesla. And another thing is also that Tesla has one model that they are already selling in over 1 million units. No one else has an electric car model that they sell in that high numbers. So no other automaker would be able to supply Waymo with 1 million units of one electric car model over the next year. No one is producing that but Tesla, not even BYD. And definitely not Seeker that Waymo has partnered up with, as they only sold about 233,000 units in all of 2024 with all their models. So if we split it evenly over their five models, each model has only produced like 50,000 units or less. So Waymo can't get the cars because they need one model just like with the Jack Y pace and then they can make it to a new form factor, but that takes time. So they don't want to have like 10 different models to get to their 1 million robo taxis, but there is nobody building one model in 1 million units. So they can't even get the cars. They can't get the LIDARs. They can't scale the geofencing areas fast enough either. I just don't see how they should ever be able to compete with Tesla's robotaxis for scale. They might make their own little niche market as city driving robotaxis, but I actually doubt it because, as I've shown before, Waymo's robotaxi is actually not very good at driving. It is driving nicely where it can, but the poor thing can't even turn left. <laughs> it turns left by turning right three times. That is why Tesla's full self-driving can drive to the same destination in 15 minutes and Waymo's Robotaxis takes 43 minutes, as I have shown before. So why would anyone get a Robotaxi that takes three times longer to get you to your destination? The answer is no one will choose that option. Time is, after all, the most valuable thing we have. I don't think anybody want to waste that time in traffic. When Tesla will also be able to offer a ride cheaper, as Tesla already has wireless charging and self-cleaning robots ready to deploy when they put the cybercabs on the street as well. And that car will cost something like five to six times less than Waymo's robotaxis with the Seeker van. And they still have to pay people to plug it in and clean it. So no one will, in their rightful mind, pay more to get a worse experience that robs you for more time. As the Cybercab will also have this huge screen, an integrated croc as well. It's just a different level of experience that Tesla will be able to offer compared to Waymo's outdated Jaguar I-Pace. And Tesla has just released a video of their full self-driving system driving through the city of Rome. I have been driving there myself and it is not a very nice city to drive in as a human, so just very, very impressive. But just try to imagine how much better a cybercab ride would be in Rome as a 
taxi or way more. The car with croc integration could show on the screen what you're driving past like the Colosseum and tell you historical facts like you're on your own little private guided tour in Rome. Tesla could start operating as a tourist attraction, not just a transportation from A to B. Just like Tesla Cybercab could also work as delivery van during the night when there is not many customers to drive around, making it quite easy for Tesla to produce Cybercabs for peak uses as they have so many use cases for the Cybercab to earn money for Tesla. Not just as a tour guide or delivery van, and then add Optimus to that as well, but also as an AI inference compute, as Elon has talked about before, or buying or selling electricity to the grid, and so much more we probably haven't even thought about. Waymo's cars can earn $1 per mile. And don't forget, as Tesla will scale their robotaxis in Austin rapidly, Waymo will suddenly, for the first time, have competition in their business in Austin. So they might be able to earn $2 to $4 per mile today, but when Tesla suddenly offers something better for half the price, Waymo will have to be forced to lower their price. And Waymo doesn't even earn money as it is today with their 250,000 rides per week with their fleet of 1,500 robotaxis. So even though Waymo will be doubling its fleet over the next year, their revenue could stay the same as they are forced to lower their prices, meaning their profits or lack thereof will stay the same. I just don't see how Waymo can survive this competition that is coming. And Uber is only an app. Yes, they have a lot of users, but so did Nokia and Blockbuster. Their user base is irrelevant. But Uber needs robotaxis to survive, and Tesla will not partner with them. So they have to stick with companies like Waymo that can't compete as it is, and then add like 15% on top of the price, or Waymo will have to take that 50% loss. Either way, Uber will not be a benefit for Waymo. It will be an extra cost added to the robotaxi fleet. So I don't see long term how Uber will survive this shift. And don't forget, Uber did once work on their own full self-driving car. So many people thought they would come and beat Tesla, but they gave up just like Lyft, Cruise, Argo AI and many others. And don't forget that Tesla now has robotaxis driving in Austin with no driver inside. So Tesla has solved it. Now just testing it out and being super careful to ramping up, but they have solved it. And you probably all remember Guidehouse, ridiculous chart showing Tesla dead last in the autonomous race. Or maybe even remember Sam from Guidehouse comments on Tesla's software back in March 2023. One that isn't a leader, Tesla. Tesla's technology is kind of a joke. It's not even remotely close to being something that can operate without a human being behind the wheel, supervising, ready to take over at any time. It's a decent level two system like Super Cruise or Ford's Blue Cruise. Yes, that didn't age well, but I tried to tell them back then, but you know, haters will hate. But of course, Sam and Guidehout also had Arco AI as a leader, but they also died. But they also had GM's Cruise. GM's Cruise launched driverless taxis in San Francisco in June 2022 and later announced plans to expand to Austin and Phoenix. The startup also hit 1 million driverless miles. GM, however, is a car company like Ford. It spent $2 billion keeping Cruise afloat in 2022, a 58% increase over 2021. Mary Barra, who is the chair and CEO of General Motors, has been very publicly committed to the Cruise effort. And I think as long as she is in that position, that will continue to be the case. But she's also 62 years old. Cruise CEO Kyle Vogt has said their target is to have a billion dollars in revenue in 2025. Yes, Sam, that aged even worse as GM's Cruise also died. And no, Mary Barra could not keep Cruise afloat. And no, Cruise is not going to make $1 billion in profit this year as they are no more. So Guidehouse chart has really shown to be as bad as predicting this as a rock. We should have turned Guidehouse's chart upside down and it would have been more accurate. 
And the most embarrassing thing is that they sold this research to people for thousands of dollars. No wonder people are so misguided about all this whole thing if they make people like Sam do the thinking for them and don't think for themselves. So Tesla has really shown the world now that their system can drive everywhere on the planet from China to Australia, Amsterdam, Rome, Paris, the US, Mexico and Canada. And they can do this for a fraction of a price, for a better experience and they are already at scale both in production and supply chain which no one else is as they rely on LiDAR. So I think we have a very exciting time ahead of us over the next few months where we will see Tesla scale beyond Waymo's fleet and then we will see Tesla just continue and Waymo stall and Uber ending up becoming completely irrelevant. Tesla has basically won. The haters just don't see it yet. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice.